welcome. This is Damon Hart, Foxy Home Buyer, the Foxy Home Buyer, and I want to welcome you today to the Real Men of Real Estate. I'm your host here today, and I have a special guest. But before I get into that, as always, I always want to give a little bit of love to the sponsors and also our our, our network that we're participating on today. So. You know me, I always got to go with KCA Radio Network. Uh, we're on uh, 1050 AM and 605.5 FM, okay? 106.5 FM, all right? And that's every first Sunday of the month you're going to see this episode. So get ready for that. And then uh, lastly, if you want to know where to find us, you're going to find us under the Building Solid Foundations uh, headline under you know Roku TV, Android TV, uh, Fire Stick, it's all there. So, and that's, that's going to be also on, on Sundays as well. So I want to let you guys know, Real Men of Real Estate, I'm stoked to have you here. And uh, I want to just get right into who we got here as our guest today, okay? So just a little bit about me. If you're first time watching us here or watching me on the Real Men of Real Estate, again, my name is Damon. And I'm what affectionately people call me is Mr. Foxy. And the reason that, besides the good looks, of course, right? The reason I'm called Mr. Foxy is because everybody knows me as the Foxy home buyer. Uh, I've been fortunate enough in the last 10 years to be able to be in the real estate market and purchase homes, uh, both uh, here in, uh, in California, in Florida, and some other states around the country. And I've been really fortunate and blessed to be connected over that period of time with a lot of people that are just really cool and know uh, what they're doing in the market. And I get also, I get the privilege because I know so much and I've been in the market, I get to see people that are up and coming. So that's really the the the, the most exciting part today is I, I met a guy uh, probably about almost about two years ago. I, I've seen his progress in this in this business uh, and I couldn't be more stoked to, to kind of get him out there and just share his story. So that's who I have with us today. So with no further ado, I'd like to uh, just kind of turn it over to my guest, uh, Mr. Jose, Jose Hernandez, how are you, brother? Uh, but it's a pleasure, and like you said, it, you couldn't have summarized it better. It's it's been pretty much about two years now, and I've, I've you know up and coming. It's my pleasure that I've met you, and I've never have thought that I would be here today and be sharing my experience. And so it's a, it's a pleasure for sure, for sure. So you know what what some people may not know. Fun fact, right? You were the first person to help me go to Mexico, right? You took me yeah. and my family to Mexico. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. When we first got here, you know, that was just, uh, you know, just just coming in and getting across the border back and forth. People think it's so hard to yeah. go back and forth across the border, but you made it, you know. Well, I figured you, you've you traveled already, I believe, to the Caribbean and, and other places. I'm like, it's really not much different other than right. instead of having to fly, you can just take a about half an hour drive down south and for sure and you get a whole different world because it pretty much is and the food the cuisine and the the level of service people have an idea that it's um you know a third world country or second world country. i'm like it's really not it's right people have to study people have to get their degrees and oftentimes we actually have a lot of people coming from the south over here to work and yep. commute back so um figure that you know Gave you the, the privilege of taking Dude. you down there and, and giving you the first hand tour. So, bro, you know, I for I appreciated it very much. And, um, you know, it's one of those things, you know, come being newer to California. You hear so many different parts. But the one thing that you anybody knows from being all around the country is that how beautiful Mexico is as a country. Uh, and oh, you know yeah. that, you know, I know this about you and your family. You're, you're first generation here in, in the U.S., aren't you? Oh, uh, yes, exactly. So my family came over pretty much about 30 years ago and so we we came from the center of mexico city and traveled over here and so to me it's it's second nature we we travel pretty much consistently about once or twice a year so yeah. I, I was like i gotta take him and so it, thank you for for being open-minded as well and um trusting me because we barely pretty much just met and i even two days later that you were like yeah let's let's do it and i let's was like all right you, you know why, Jose, because I love tacos. Like, we, the, yeah. the spot we stayed at to get tacos, you can't beat no, absolutely. that little place downtown, man. Yeah, that instead was... of paying, like, a premium here, like, $3, $4 per taco, you're getting dollar and fifty cents over there. So And and they were the best tasting tacos. I don't know what it is about stuff that, that is good priced and delicious. You feel like you got the biggest deal in yeah. the world. So, yeah, anywhere. If you, if you want to know, besides the real estate part, 
uh, best t- tacos in Tijuana, you're the guy to go see uh, 100%. Yeah, for sure. And then if, <laughs> if we had a chance, we'd go to um, Rosarito too, if we, you know, or oh, yeah. Playa of Mexico, and they yeah. have mariscos that's top notch, like you're not going to get anywhere else. So. Fantastic. Yeah. Okay. So we'll talk about that. We'll leave that yeah, one yeah, in yeah, the yeah. comments for well, everybody. Well, before we get hungry. <laughs> exactly. All right, bro. So, you know, uh, so again, I just wanted to just, again, give you your flowers, man. You're a, a young man getting started in real estate, but you've got a really unique story that I think a lot of people, you know, would, would really appreciate. Like you said, your first generation. Um, and then I know you, you know, you started out just kind of like a lot of kids, right? You just start out working, trying to figure things out. Yeah. And then you caught the bug for real estate. Yeah. I, uh, it Tell was me about kinda, that. It was kind of odd. It didn't happen from one day to another. Um, originally i i was i'm very artsy so i i I used to think that i was wanting to get into graphic design and it wasn't until junior year senior year of high school where i was realizing um just finance to me was something that i was interested in and i found out a lot as i was researching and watching videos that uh there's a lot of people that don't know how to manage their finances and i was i think i was watching the dave ramsey show and there's one episode that that stuck out to me where I believe there's a couple, one's an MBA, um, just recently graduated, and then there's another couple that had a higher degree, but they're about 400 something thousand dollars in debt. Mm. And so being with the background of business and, and being in debt and wasting more money than what they should have, to me was mind boggling, but it's a thing that, you know, I don't know the statistic here in America, but we, you know, we're living paycheck to paycheck. And so my family coming from a country into another country, not knowing the language and pretty much starting from zero right um managed to purchase property and and own it outright and you know thankfully uh, the past five years we've been completely debt free from that and so we don't owe anything on the mortgage in southern california san diego right. county right which is pretty expensive and, and you know top five top ten in, in the u.s so that's a privilege in its own and i there's a thing that sticks to my, my head is if we're living here in southern california you're already rich and even if w- despite the background despite what you're coming from the fact that you're living here it says a lot because you could be going to any other place and you know obviously it's cheaper in other states or other counties but that's something that i always have to reflect on and just be appreciative so there, there's been a lot yeah yeah and it sounds like you know i think i heard one time it was warren buffett i feel like he's the one who said it's like hey if you're born here in, in the United States, you, you kind of won the lottery. You know oh, what I mean? Definitely. You, yeah, you won like the, the 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 world lottery, so right. to speak. But then on top of that, I think even further, and and it sounds like it's part of your story too, the fact that your parents made the move because it wasn't easy to move from Mexico. I know no, your story, no, no, no. right? Yeah. You had to leave some things behind. You had to come here. You had to risk a little bit. But the fact that you're here now and and being here, like you said you're in a much better place and right. it's something to keep in perspective. Yeah, it's all perspective ultimately because they had a, they, originally my family, my cousins and my aunts back um, back in Mexico were telling my dad, don't do it. Mm. It's too dangerous. Um, don't take the risk. And he wanted to push for more. And so uh, thankfully he did and, and we managed to get here. Now we can provide back and go to the family and, and see them um, once, twice, three, well, however many times we want to go sure. a year. And just, just really going back to the principle of, of taking that risk and the leap of faith of purchasing property. Obviously, back then it was a lot cheaper, but the dollar was still, you know, in in a sense, the ratio is still the same. It was expensive to them. Right. And working and, and just making that move and now having the freedom um, that real estate has given to us sure. is something that I, it kind of clicked into me. And I realized that if, if my parents managed to purchase property, and house hack it essentially because we actually live in a duplex and so my my neighbors have always been my my uncles and aunts uh-huh. and my grandma i've never had powerful a, i've never had any other neighbors yeah so we it's a two-bedroom one bath. did you have to run credit check i'm just kidding no 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 <laughs> it's a uh, it, it's a crazy story because everybody else has neighbors and to me i'm like i they're just my family yeah essentially and so yeah we house hacked um i remember the first parts of my life um between elementary up until high school it, it was tough you know li- having two three families in one home and having the other home pay itself off and just sacrificing for pretty much about 15 years um to make that happen yeah and it was difficult and so not a lot of people wouldn't do that but we found that that's to us it was just easy it made sense purchase the property next to you have the property that you live in 
make the mortgage payments and have the loan just pay itself off. And eventually over time, it's going to pay itself off. And so, well, I mean, I, that's, I, that's it. I think that you just hit the nail on the head. And I'm so stoked that you're here because you got this way of just making everything really easy to understand and practical because you're, in your story, I, I hear this all the time from people that say like, you know, real estate is, is really high right now right. Or, the, or the values are all over the place. But what your story says and what time has always said with real estate is, look, you're only, you're only concerned about losing money in real estate if you have to get in at a certain point and get out really fast. So, if yeah, you're going to be in this thing for the long haul, you will not lose money because as we've seen in the last few years, we can't make as much of it as we need to right. as fast as we need to. And not to mention the the value of the currency changes. Oh right? yeah, it, so, it it always kind of goes against you. But right, going back to what you said with Warren Buffett, I mean he's the founder and the godfather of, of compound interest and purchasing index funds. And the thing that plays into that is time. Time right. is on your side. Right. And so in this case, if you're not trying to purchase property and flip it, then obviously you're going to be worried about wanting to make money or or lose money. But if you just purchase a property and hold it for the long term. Things that, you know, in general are, are getting pretty difficult and scarce with properties being available, rent going up. And so that's a commodity pretty much that starts going up in value. Yeah. And so to me, I always I have clients coming around and they're saying, hey, should I purchase property or not? I'm like, well, you know, are you renting? Yes. OK, well, how long have you been renting? Well, I've been renting for 15 plus years. Well, you've already paid off that property of the landlord that you were there and now if you were to buy a property, are you buying property to sell it to make money off of it or for your family? So, for well, sure. it's for my, for my family. So then don't worry about what's going to come after. As long as you make your payments, which clearly you have been, the good thing is your payments are not going to go up anymore because you locked in at a certain rate for 25, 30 years. If anything, you can take advantage in the future when rates fluctuate that you can refinance and have that benefit. You're, you're in control. Otherwise, you're giving control to somebody else. And that's something that I found it's not what I would want to do. So For sure. Buddy, so I'm super excited about that too and hear more. We're just going to take a quick little break here and hop back in with Jose and then talk more about what, what's coming up next. So stay tuned.